what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're back here on the new video. I'm Jamai. Bye, Bye. Ahmed. Great friend of mine. Yeah, <laughs> Bye, Ahmed. Like, I'm happy to be here as always, man. Yeah, this, this is my mother's friend. Uh, he's really a wonderful person. Uh, always talk to you guys about him. Uh, so, I got him over to check out some Islamic videos with me. So, yeah. we're going to be reacting to Jesus versus Muhammad, Muslim response, misconceptions. Mm. I think it's the most misconception about Jesus Christ and Muhammad. Uh, so I'm gonna check this out and see how it is. Um, yeah, it will be fun. Yeah, run my Bible. Uh -huh, Bible run. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, let's give this a try, guys. You know how I do it. We'll talk less right now. We got small. Let's get into this video. One of the most controversial videos that I've ever done would have to be the Quran challenge. It's beginning to get really boring. It's like whoever wants to get famous or make a name for themselves, the first thing they do is go ahead and make a video on YouTube about the evil side of Islam or the evil prophet of war. Islam, the religion of peace. Allah Akbar! And I understand that you're a minority and there's not that many people like you that are as ignorant and as close-minded as you are. And I could let the dislikes do the talking for me, but um, just in case anyone takes you a bit too seriously, I think it's best that I educate the people. Jesus versus Muhammad. Peace be upon them both. Because both of them are prophets of Islam and for that reason I will respect both because they were the best of men to walk this earth. In regards to your first allegation of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him marrying a minor, all I can say is that Islam is the only religion to actually prohibit the marriage of minors who have not reached the age of puberty. The truth is in different times, in different places, in different contexts, the age for marriage varies. Even in US states, you have states that allow 13, 14 and 15. What age do you recommend? It varies. And since this is Jesus versus Muhammad, let's compare it to the context of Jesus. With none other than the best of women to have walked this earth, Mary, the mother of Jesus. She got married to Joseph, who was 90 years old when she was only 12 years old. You have to understand there is absolutely nothing wrong with this because at different context. Was it from the Bible or? I saw um 90 years and 12 years old. Yeah, yeah, I saw like a commentary like so this is not in verse in the Bible. Oh Matthew, a shorter commentary by DLC Allison, page 12. Uh, I've never read the Bible that says Joseph is 90, 90 years and Mary was 12. We just know like um Mary is a holy person. Yeah. Um, a virtuous woman, the most virtuous. Um, I, I've never pictured her to be 12 years that young. <laughs> 12 years is very, very young. Yeah. Still a teenage um, lady or a girl. So, this was never written in the Bible that Jesus, Joseph was 90 and Mary was 12. Wow. This, because yeah. a lot of Christians would have been talking about this by now. That means a lot of Christians would have been married younger, younger, younger. Like, possibly 11, 12. Like, ah, this is not, Joseph did it, so uh, yeah, because so I, I don't know, like, I'm not sure, like, have you seen that before? No, like, no, no, like, this Matthew, a shorter commentary by Dale C. Allison, yeah. page 12. I think we need to have, check it out another time, yeah. You know, I've read this video before, but I didn't see it in that context, in that context. Okay. like, Joseph 90, Mary 12. Okay, because, like, um, in Islam, how we do things is like. It's a religion of knowledge, yeah. When you say something, you need to prove, bring yeah. out fact. So, I don't know, like, in my own spirit, I need to, like, check this book out. This guy's commentary. We'll check it out. Yeah. To yeah. save my <laughs> Yeah. It's kind of, like, ridiculous for me in some way, like. Yeah, in some way, yeah. But I don't know, like, let's just don't judge, like, we need to, like, check this out later and be sure. True. Let's keep on watching, guys. Yeah. 12 years old. You have to understand there is absolutely nothing wrong with this because at different contexts, in different times, in different places, people mature and develop 
differently. You cannot simply compare the time and place of Muhammad, peace be upon him, to the time and place we're living today. Today we have iPhones and air conditioners and electric heaters, while in the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, they were living in the middle of the desert. You cannot simply compare the two. And another really important thing to note is that Muhammad, peace be upon him, has been criticized ever since the time of prophethood for an entire 1400 years. But it wasn't until 1905 that the issue of his marriage with Aisha actually became an issue. Why is this? Because it was an absolute norm. They had developed faster, matured faster, and weren't like the woman of today. The next issue of multiple wives you brought up. Firstly, read your Bible. Abraham, how many wives did he have? Two. Sarah and Hajar. Prophet Solomon, 700 wives and 300 concubines. True, true, the issue true. of multiple uh, wives. True, that one. Uh, <laughs> bro, but for, nah, that's true. That's totally true. Uh, but from my own side, like, uh, the way you people portray uh, Sulaiman, peace be upon him, sort of, mm. like, he's a prophet of God. Uh, we don't see him as someone that has concub uh, concubines. Is someone like you get out of marriage. Yeah, like, like um, nah, this is quite sad. Sad shit. So, like, uh, we don't see him like that. We don't see him like, someone that has committed those type of things because like uh, you know sex out of marriage is haram yeah. it's not good so like um him committing adultery in our religion we don't see him like that just imagine someone being a prophet and having side chicks like does it weigh in like <laughs> True. you get from my own side that's how i see it uh, well we christian <laughs> <laughs> like, that's true like we as of now, like recently, um, people don't permit um, churches to to vote a man who has actually divorced to remarry another person. Oh. Because from our side, if you divorce a wife, um, in the Bible, the New Testament says if you divorce um, your wife, you better remain on marriage oh. for the rest of your life. You get that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So before you can divorce a wife, you have to, uh, maybe out of inf infidelity, Maybe she cheated on you. That is the only way, that is the only permission that was given to you to the first wife. Mm -hmm. So this um, polygamousness um, is written in the Bible. We all know um, Abraham married two wife, Sarah and Haggai, because um, Sarah was unable to like, give birth. So mm -hmm. Sarah, so um, Abraham married um, Haggai because he wants to have a child. After, but Jesus, sorry, God had promised him a promised child. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to give him a promised child, a promised son. <laughs> So with that aside, Abraham still went to marry another woman and uh, pregnant her, uh, then she gave it. So, but for Solomon, there is a legend in her in our Bible. In our, in our Bible is the um is the wisest person in the world up to now for us. Because um, God asked him what do you want him to give to you, then Solomon asked for wisdom. Mm -hmm. So we ourselves see Solomon like if a wise man like that, after taking um God giving you wisdom to be very smart and very wise. To make um, incredible decisions, he was still able to go and marry seven hundred wives, yeah. and how many co concubines? Three hundred like, concubines, and like ah, so we kind of like um, some Christians still I'm doubtful. Yeah, it. we feel like we have the right to marry um some, not all. Some of them feel like we still have the right to marry like two women or three women. Yeah. But according to our um. This um, central where we are now, right now, people don't marry that. Well, my tribe, we Igbo, um, if you are to go to church, they will judge you like why you want to marry to wife. Okay. But traditionally, you, marry more you than have one. the right okay. you get to marry more than one wife. Okay. It's just like, um, it's kind of like, it's not easy to deal with one woman, then you add two, add three, add four. Okay. It's kind of like, yeah. chokes. Yeah. So, we both. Traditionally, you have that right as to, to, marry. to marry more than one. But okay. when it comes to um, religiously, um, Bible, um, going to church and stuff, mm -hmm. it's been prohibited. And you used to go like that. Okay. Yeah. The pastors won't want to marry you with um, knowing fully where you are already married to someone else. Okay. Yeah. So, All right. Because, like, concerning that thing you talked about, um, they stopped. Polygamy married in Christianity. I, I've forgotten the year. It was passed uh, by the church. I think it was just the church. Is it in England or where? Because way back they used to marry. Yeah. That was, they they passed the law. Um, I've forgotten the year, but I think it's UK. 
at that point in time on Great Britain. And they pass that law now, you should only marry one wife. One wife, yeah, one yeah. man, one woman. Yeah, yeah, that's it. But like way back, you mm -hmm. should like marry more than one, one. true, yeah. And the funniest thing what happened, like when they stopped that one, what happened was like, they started- Progress. Progress, like what happened, you know what happened? <laughs> Side chick becoming on the increase, no. yeah, because like they certify them now, you know, you have certified yeah, sex workers. Me, I, I, I don't know, per se, how people see things. Like, I feel like sometimes, why there's a question we have to ask like, why are men kind of like polygamous? Like, why are men only desiring uh, more women? Because this restriction of my one man, one woman have created a lot of issues in Christianity as of today. Mm -hmm. You get so a lot of. Christians feel like maybe some men, like most men, most of them feel like since they are being restricted from marrying um another mm -hmm. person, then yeah. they are free to have the single and yeah. that affects the faith. So it's kind of because, effect, yeah. Yeah, because some of them come to church and speak, no, my one woman, one woman, be faithful to your wife. That's called hypocrisy. Yeah. When when you are telling people to do something that you're not doing, you are going against it, you are you are a hypocrite and Jesus forbid that jesus detests that mm. so if you are to speak out in church and tell people one woman one wife don't have a side chick and stuff you have to go according to that yeah but because of this restriction a lot of men who still use right now you, you see pastors um people having affairs with some yeah, people like some of all those things that comes about like yeah. so i don't know why they created such why they passed out? Why you, uh -huh. oh, yeah. So for me, I feel like it shouldn't be like that. You get well, it's an advice. No. Come to my side, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's as, this person, um, uh, what is his name? Um, Paul, he advised um, men to like, mm. it's good to marry um, one woman. Yeah. But it's, an, and it's advising you. I feel like you'll be more um, productive. And you won't be that confused because when you have an issue from here, this house, you have an issue from this other house, mm -hmm. kind of like mess around with your head and you don't know where you stand. Also, in the sense of children, you kind of like give birth to more children that you can take you can't take care of. So, so mm -hmm. men who are unable to take care of some children, maybe they have like um, two children from this woman, then they have like five from this other one. Mm -hmm. on, on a normal day, they, they will not want such large family, but because they, they have to satisfy this home and this home, so they have to like, yeah. keep multiplying so for for us that is that i feel like that's why they pass that judgment because it was an advice of paul okay you get so yeah. we follow um the teachings of paul yeah you get yeah so it's that's it that was the reason why i feel like they pass that judgment okay. so you but, see sorry for continuing but i feel like that same judgment of course a lot of issues, issues in yeah. christianity yeah. what's that in in islam <laughs> When you look at the books, you know, people say we, we are, they say we should marry four wives. But this time you look at it, it's only Jada said you should marry only one. You know why? Because like it said, if you if you can marry one, two, I think two, three, and four, if I don't mistake the, the ayah, hmm. yeah, two, three, or four, one, two, three, or four, yeah. But if you know you can't be just to them, marry only one. So you see, understand the statement. So um, that one, I don't know much deep, uh, deep about it. Mm -hmm. Things I don't know much deep about, like how they mean you need to be just, I don't know. So unless I ask someone that knows much about it, you get. But in, in a way, if you think you can be just to them and you marry more than one, okay. The issue you're talking about, yeah, some family, the wives will be arguing, yeah. causing stress. That's where it comes like you having a more religious knowledge. When you have a more religious knowledge, sound knowledge about your religion, and you marry wives that you can teach them, teach your children, they will know how to like go about things. Well, all humans will make mistakes, yeah? But I think during the prophet's time, I think the older wife, I don't know if it's Khadija, or was give, making time for like returning the prophet to spend time with the other wives. Because okay. why? He, she has the understanding. See, that is the thing. That is the main thing that we have to talk about. All women are, are not the same. Fine. So yeah, but but I believe like you see, as a human, if you are not learning, you are dead. True. Sure. You understand? So if you how you enjoy more about whatever you're doing, like you're learning video editing or something, or the more you learn about it, the more you become expert in it. But what's worse is for you to like start stop. You are stuck, like you don't know much about it. 
Is it some certain things like you you kind of like go to you stress your life for and all other things? When you have deeper knowledge about religion and other things, you know how to handle situations. You see, like just like um the other time on the other video, you said like. When you read your Bible, like Monday, Tuesday, you see changes. Like from certain things you used to react to, you don't react to them. Yeah. That's how life is. Our purpose here is to serve God. You get. So I believe the God that created us, everything, like the one that created the laptop, has a manual about the laptop. If you follow the manual, you can never be wrong about it. Sure. So if you follow God's word, no matter. There is nothing. God will test you, you get. Because like, as a believer, God will test you. Life won't be that rosy. But if you understand God, well, there is nothing that you go through that is not mentioned in God's book. That's you get. True. So it always gives you something to like. If this happened to you, do this. If this happened to you, do this. this. But you have to be disciplined and know how to go about doing it. So that's what I think. Let's keep watching guys and um, see what more he has to offer. This is a famous criticism, but if you were to put the pieces to the puzzle, they don't really match. If Muhammad, peace be upon him, wanted all these wives to fulfill his own desires, it doesn't really make sense when the tribe of his time offered him the best of women, the most beautiful and fancy of women, but he rejected them. It really doesn't make any sense. It's also important to note that out of all of his wives, all of them were ex-divorcees or widows, except for one. This is not a man who was chasing after his desires as you make him out to look like. It's a man who cares about women that will be left with no other man to take care of them. It's a man who cares about the importance of community, the importance of looking after one another. And also a very important thing to note is that Islam actually prohibits the marriage to more than one wife. If you are incapable of catering physically, financially and mentally to more than one wife you are prohibited and even still if you are capable you have the financial means and you are physically capable to cater for more than one woman you are prohibited if you do not know how to deal justly with them and since you brought up the issue of adultery i'm just going to let you know that 30 to 60 percent of couples in the u.s actually fall into infidelity and adultery you are not <laughs> I think you should have a problem with the actual issue of adultery in itself. I mean, Tiger Woods' wife ran after him with some golf clubs. What does that say? And the actual punishment for adultery in Islam <coughs> has rarely ever been implemented due to the sheer amount of evidence needed to prove a case of adultery. On so many instances, a man would come to Prophet Muhammad and would say, I have committed adultery. Prophet Muhammad said, get away from me. You're a madman. Something is wrong with you. The same man came back. He said, I have committed adultery. I want to get the punishment so I can purify myself. The whole purpose of the punishment of adultery isn't to punish people. It is to deter them away from the issue of adultery. So if they knew such a punishment existed, they would run away from it. Another thing you mentioned, Jihad. And as much as you say that the Bible doesn't have verses on Jihad. After church today, pull out your Bible and look up Psalm 137. And you'll see that our own text has passages that can make us uncomfortable. And Islam teaches jihad too, and we don't shy away from it. That is war. Yeah. Are we, it's happened. Okay. Like, and the Bible is even written there. Um, David, David went to war, he conquered, came back victorious. How did David defeat Goliath? Jesus gave him the, sorry, I said Jesus. It was um, something that was ordained or planned by God, like this incident is going to happen. Going to um, my Bible, um, David used um, stones to yeah. throw out um, Goliath and also defeated him. So war have always been something that have always been occurring since. Yeah, so no when you, in the Bible, there is a lot of war. You know, this was over with himself. Um, violence take it by force. Like sometimes you have to be very, very aggressive and also like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's not like Bible restrict or remove some things that have to do with war. There are war in the Bible, but there are more spiritual battles. Like we, we Christians believe, like we there is a physical battle, but there are spiritual battles that are beyond our own sin that we have to like pray because we believe before something happened in physical, it has already happened in the spiritual. Mm -hmm. So that's how we see things to be. Also, the physical war that normally happen. Is There's there? evidence of war in the Bible, okay. so it's, it's true. All right.
So that's cool. So that's cool. Contrary to what you said, war waging Muhammad, having never been tortured or persecuted, to the <laughs> we were persecuted. The companions of Muhammad were tortured severely. Sumayya, a female companion of Muhammad, peace be upon him, had a spear driven through her private part simply because she believed in Allah, believed in the one God. Bilal, the first black man to accept the message of Islam. He was an Ethiopian slave. He accepted the message of Islam and he was given rights at a time where there were no rights for his people. He was tortured for this. Even in USA, these people weren't even given rights until 100 years ago. Black people weren't even considered human beings. After many years of forbearance, after many years of persecution, after many years of torture, finally Allah had given permission to Muhammad to fight. Sure, we can give him the other cheek, but that would only result in a whole lot of dead Muslims. So Islam gave him the rights to stand up for yourself. As it says in the Quran, fight for the sake of the oppressed from the men, women and children. And Islam even made responsibility on everyone participating in war. You do not hurt the trees, you do not hurt the elderly, the children, the women. Where are your ethics of war like we have ethics of war? I have two words for you. Predator drones. The children in Libya cannot even turn the other cheek because their cheeks blown off from your drones. And lastly, you wanted to talk about his death. Yes, his final words were, do not turn my grave into a place of worship. Because he didn't want people to start worshipping him. Because the message of Islam was never to turn Muhammad into a god or praise him excessively. When Muhammad, peace be upon him, died, the companions couldn't walk. They couldn't speak. They couldn't talk with one another. They were so shattered. Some of them had to deny that he was even dead because they couldn't believe it. It was too much for them to grasp. And you want to come out and make a mockery out of his death. Shame on you. In our religion, it is prohibited, 100% prohibited to make a mockery out of anyone else's belief. And you want to make a mockery out of ours. Shows what values you have. And everyone else that had to watch this video, I'm sorry we had to go through this. But we really have to show the world who Muhammad, peace be upon him, really was. He was nothing like what they say. Rather, he was the best of men to walk this earth. And if you read his book for yourself, read his life, read his sirah, you would see for yourself what kind of man Muhammad, peace be upon him, was. Thank you. Yeah, when I first heard the uh, um, point, when um, Muhammad um, told people not to go and worship him, and worship his grave and stuff like that, I was really, really shocked. Like, because that was my first time hearing that um, statement. Like, it was actually something like him. He said it before he died. So I mean, it's, it's he's it's can only be a great man who who knows people are definitely going to do such a thing. Yeah, like. Right. It got me emotional. Yeah. Emotional, yeah. Because it's, it's very, very smart of him to tell people not to go worship him in you know, his grave. Because people start idolizing him yeah. as a god. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Like, you see, being a prophet of God, like the Isa, the Abraham, Nuh, Muhammad, or peace mm -hmm. be upon them all, it's like they are being ordained by God. So they will know, like, God has given them the information that they need on how to like live their life or what happened next, you understand? You know, all of them have their own miracle, their time mm -hmm. you get. Jesus' time is like, God used him to like what? Make something out of sand, turn into an owl and fly, healing the uh, dead. The blind. And the blind and raising the, the dead. dead. Yeah. The lep healing the leper and all of that. It's a thing during his own time. You come to Moses' time, Moses, there's a time of magic in Egypt. So God gave him the power to like put the snake down and take yeah. over. So in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, what happened was this, like the Arabians were quite, you see this graduation thing we are putting on, it started from the Arabian people. The Europeans were going there to like study and they give them that rapper. And also when you come to Europe with a the gown, they you know like, oh, yeah, they, graduated. to learn, yeah. So you see, that thing continued up to now, we put another that thing, but if you know the history, that's where it came from. So there we are, people that are learned, they were wicked. Mm. Arabians, if you get a girl child today, what will happen? They'd see the girl child as a property during the time before the prophets. The Arabian people like, they'll bury a girl child alive. Mm. They will use the girl as a, if I owe you money and I can give you the, my sister as uh, a property culture. or your wife or even my, my, my mother or my daughter, mm. my, as a property like our exchange, I can't pay you, so take that one. You get. So when he came, he gave rights to people. When he sits with his companions like together, you won't differentiate like 
this is Muhammad, this is not Muhammad. The dresses he put on is something normal someone can wear. He, imagine he was the leader at Medina, like a ruler, the king, let's say a king or president of a country. Yeah. He would make rules, govern the people, make religious gathering, teach people. So you see all those times, like what he teaches is like something like giving people's rights, how they should live their life. And you see at the time, talking about slavery and all of that, 200, 300 years ago, we are slaves. We don't have rights. But during his time, Bilal, he was an Ethiopian. He went there, he was a slave. Later on, he accepted Islam. He was the company. He was the one doing the avan, like the call to prayer. Mm -hmm. So you see, he gave him the rights. That's a big position for you to be calling avan, like calling people to prayer. He gave him the right to do that. So you see, like, if you follow the things, you know there are a lot of misconceptions, like even war, like the people killing people now, saying it's because of Islam. I think I heard, or I think, was it last week, a guy was burnt alive, a pastor in Nigeria. I've forgotten the place. By some Islamic, they call them those terrorist group. Okay. They're saying it's like because he didn't accept Islam. That's that's stupidity. Islam doesn't force anyone to be a Muslim. Compulsion is not in religion. See, they're saying you can't cut down trees rather than killing somebody who didn't fight you. So you see, there are a lot of misconceptions like we fighting, like um having plenty of wives. You see, I got to know today that the only wife he got married, like who is not a widow or or, or like a divorcee. It's only one Khadija, I think, is his first wife, the first woman that accepted Islam that consoled him. So you see, like, he wasn't doing it out of desire. He was doing it because, like, he was being commanded by God. Like, he's the only one that can marry more than four wives. And also, you see, like, he was doing it to, like, bring them to Islam and other things, not for, like, sexual desire and all of that. So you see, so there are a lot of misconceptions. And I like this video so much. Thanks for, like, showing it to me. I swear. It, yeah. It's really cool. And I love how he cleared it. The points that other man was yeah, same. saying. This was really nice, guys. Um, comment down below what you think about this video. Give us a thumbs up. Yeah. Share the video as many as can. Subscribe to YouTube channel, guys. You know how to do it. We'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag like an old lady. I'm back wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater Baby mama bugging, I'm so quick to hit ignore Buku bitches in my bed, I got scales all